Welcome to the Barrel Chat Podcast, where we provide an unfiltered look into the craft beer industry from the untrained palate of two dumbass outsiders. I am Matthew Muncie, and as always, I am joined by Dustin Wood. Dustin, how you doing? Good, man. I'm really enjoying the ambience in the background here. We're on site here at the brewery we're going to be doing a podcast about here. Uh, super stoked. About an hour and a half, hour 45 minute drive to get here. Sat outside on the patio, tried some beer, and now we're going to talk to the brewer. It's super stoked. Yeah, so for obviously everyone listening, you've already seen what the episode is titled. Uh, we are at Science Project Brewing, and they have live music tonight. And the, uh, the brew area is right on the other side. So uh, if you hear some, some music coming through, I did the best I could. To eliminate it. Don't sue us. We didn't yeah. buy this music. <laughs> yeah. There may be some. We're, we're in a brew area. Obviously, this is not the, the perfect closed-in space for a podcast, so you're going to hear you're gonna hear a little bit of difference here, but, you know, that's what you, what you got to do uh, to speak with the brewer. So joining us today is the, uh, the head brewer, the head only brewer. brewer? Yeah. No, I have an assistant. Okay. Yeah, so head brewer. Cody Moon. What's going on, guys? Oh, not much. How how are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's a uh, what is it like eight thirty nine nine, nine o'clock now? Yeah. So it's a it's been a long day, but uh, happy to sit at the table with you guys in the brew room, as uh, we have live music out there, like you said. So, uh, yeah, no, it's cool to see meet, officially meet you guys, uh, not just on the uh, on the internet, and yeah, I'm excited to have you guys out here. Uh, as you know, we've done one of his beers before. Um, if you look back on the episode for Science Project Life of the Marty. Um, See what you think of it. We enjoyed it. We had some critique and some feedback for him, but uh, yeah, for sure, we should definitely get in our rum barrel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think next year you're gonna see a couple of different options of that. As uh, it's it went over better than I expected here for sure. Being, uh, you know, Logan Sports a, a light beer town. Uh, our, our light beers sell crazy. Um, so to put that on and do that, um, it's a baby of mine and. Uh, honestly, some of your critiques is things I thought myself, so it was kind of cool, cool to hear that. Um, but there's some, there's some talks of some fun stuff coming in the future for sure. Sweet. So we also have a flight here in front of us. Yes, we do, and we are gonna post this up on social media. So the first thing I have to say is a, I love the beakers. I, I think that is such a fantastic just glass to to pour out of. And uh, do you guys have, like, science project-themed ones? We currently don't. Um, so that was kind of something we looked at for a long time. Um, just couldn't find anyone that would sell them slash do the labels on them. Um, we looked at the idea of buying them and sending them somewhere else, and it was kind of just one of those things where uh, if we did that and it was our flight glass, it'd probably get stolen. Yep. <laughs> so I would steal one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I probably would have a whole rack at my house. Um, so we haven't done that yet, but so... Uh, Unofficially, there's we're looking at a, a pretty cool event in October here at the end of the year um, where this will get labeled and will be part of that event. Oh, so cool. uh, not ready to officially announce anything, but um, it's something we're, I've been working on for quite a few months now to get figured out. And uh, I would say June 1st-ish, look for an announcement from us about what's going on, and it's going to involve a, a labeled uh, five-ounce speaker for that. So sounds, nice. like a, sounds like a beer festival to me. I mean, I'm not going to say anything, but... <laughs> I'm not gonna say you're wrong either, but <laughs> the the other thing to point out is the is the uh, tray sheet metal, yeah, that it's in. It's sheet metal. It's not wood like most places. It's got obviously the lasered cutout science project. It's got a rocket ship. So how'd you guys decide to come up with this as the as the basically the board to use? Yeah. So when we looked at this originally, and we with this name hit, you know, obviously when it comes to science project name, like you're thinking science stuff. And so we instantly went to whatever flights we're going to do. It needs to be as scientific as possible. So we originally went for like a, like a test tube idea. That, that, that was a train wreck. Pouring <laughs> test tubes would be a yeah. terrible idea. Um, and so we kind of went into a beaker rack. And this is uh, made locally. Uh, a guy here in town made these for us. Um, you know, he came with a prototype originally. Um, he added the engraved items here. We added the number hole punches for those. Um, if you come and have a flight here, normally you'd have a sheet. I kind of just poured them for you guys today, but you'd have a sheet that would match them. And, uh, so that's kind of where our idea is. It's like a, it's like a beaker rack, um, like you would use in your, your high school and college laboratory areas. So all of me 
originally thought when I was getting going to think about getting a flight here was it'd be cool if they were in the ones that like narrowed at the top. Yeah. So they're like the almost a potion bottle. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I was like that. Would we be thought neat. that too, like like an Ermeyer flask. Where, yeah. But then it'd be like a full like dos boot like all the time. <laughs> so it it would probably be messy. I mean, you made a mess on your shirt already today. So, but it might be a mess every day if that's because somebody didn't hold the fucking door. <laughs> You didn't even get the door open. No, for well, he left. It. He went in before me. Uh, that was my bad. <laughs> I was on. just focused on getting you guys in here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's kind of a cool like idea, and we've thought about other items. There's a brewery, uh, and, and and I'm not gonna try to say the name because I'll butcher in Pittsburgh. Who I met their brewer in Asheville, North Carolina, one time on a trip, and uh, we were talking about things, and he starts explaining his brewery, and he's like, "Yeah, man, we got 16 ounce beaker glasses," and I was like, "For real?" And he showed me a picture. I was like, well, those are a flight glasses, but not 16 ounce. So we've yet to find 16 ounce. I'm not sure where he's getting them from, but they're cool looking glasses. So maybe in the future release of a 16 ounce beaker glass would be dope. But yeah. for now, it's going to be a normal pint glass here. This does kind of remind me. Do you remember the the distillery that used to be downtown? Oh, yeah. um, I can, I'll never remember what the hell it was called, but it was a, it was a science-based distillery. Really? Yeah. And it was quite not across cool. from Chili Water, right? No, it was actually downtown on Mass Ave. Um, oh, it was probably about oh god, twenty seventeen. It's been a while. It's been because really? they because they ended up closing down. They made good stuff. They closed down, and then uh, Books and Brews Mass Ave opened up. Oh, okay. So it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. But this is that was kind of their setup. That's cool. Broken Beaker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember hearing about them. I never made it down there, uh, but I know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was it was kind of an instant thing. Like we kind of started really, um, you know, kind of branding a few things. But um, you know, some scientific stuff people know, and other things people have to Google. And I didn't want to be a place that everyone just Google's what we're trying to pull off. So uh, we we kind of sprayed our names a little bit further out. We do have some that are um, you know scientific themed, but um, not all of them are. So we 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 kind of keep a, some of it going on. Uh, we're getting ready to drop. Um, a loyalty program where it's going to be like a coaster club and all the coasters are periodic tel- elements. So you buy an element and that's your <laughs> coaster. So that's kind of, you know, cool and see. And, um, but it's like kind of keeping to our idea, but also um, still doing our own thing too. So. Nice. Well, the way we used to do this in the past, because if you are a, a new listener to our show and you didn't l- listen to the original incarnation of this show, uh, we would kind of talk through the flight. And as, as we, we drink the beers. We also start asking some of the questions, you know, the basics. How'd you get into brewing? How did yeah. science projects start? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I love that. Let's, uh, let's jump into this first beer here. Tell us a little bit about what we're drinking. Yeah, so that first glass is uh, Uno Mas. It's our uh, Mexican-style lager. Um, we brewed it with a ton of corn, probably more than I should have. Um, and then we use Moteca hops, which kind of produces like a lime flavor. I'm a big corn tortilla, lime taco guy, man, like okay. as, as thick as possible. And that was kind of my envision of this when we started doing that. So it's my first go in a Mexican lager. Um, I'm not really a lager guy. I'm more of a weird, fun kind of guy, but understanding the appreciation of what a classic lager should be like. So, Well, you're also in small town USA, yeah. so yeah, this yeah. probably sells really well. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's been actually been going crazy. I just was in the cooler just now moving things around before I did these flights, and I was like, oh my gosh, we're already through four of these since last week, which is wild. So uh, it's moving, so... I love it, um, <laughs> but I love a good corn base to a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's enough of the like the lime hint that I get it. It's almost like those chili lime uh, tortilla chips. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. But I really enjoy it. It's a clean lager. It's a beautiful color. Uh, the flavors are what I want. It, honestly, it reminds me a lot of pachanga. Oh, the. F- Take that and run with it, boys. We're the show's over. We're done talking. <laughs> I was, I was trying to remember what pachanga actually tastes like. It's been a minute. Since it's I've been had a little it. lighter than this. Yeah. I don't think it's quite as corn heavy. I was um, trying to think of like how much, how much of a of a spice note was in pachanga. Yeah, because I feel like when I hear Mexican lager, I think of like a little bit of a spice note that I don't get out of this. Mm-hmm. But it obviously could be an interpretation as well. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. You know. I feel like I had, I had one today at uh, a place in Fort Wayne that currently has it on tap. And I thought it was, it's, it's a little uh, fuller bodied than some of the Mexican lagers I'm used to drinking. 
Um, and that just may be the mash temp and those kind of things that we, we need to play with. Um, but it's it definitely came out way better than I expected, and it's it's it hit some of the notes I want. Um, you know, next year we might do some with lime zest to kind of pull a little bit more out. But for that, you know, again, like we're we're a light drink, a drinking town. Um, our our, our uh, American wheat, our cream ale go out as soon as they go on. So it's it's definitely hits for those kind of people here. This would be fun with like a salt rim and a lime on it. Love that. Yeah. We just should have done that last unique. weekend on or uh, Cinco de Mayo for yeah, sure. Just something unique. Like w- we went to Zwanzig and they do like their uh, toasted marshmallow beer and they like m- fucking torch a marshmallow yeah. on it. Like, well, that's just that's what I want to see. And that's, yeah, it's presentation for sure. Well, I mean, even if you did it on a flight, like if somebody ordered this on a flight and it came with a salt rim and a lime on it, that stands out on a flight. So yeah. that's kind of unique. But. We went to uh, Hopler last week for Lord of Hop Days, and we served it there, and we took Uno Mas. And uh, someone introduced me to hop beers. I've never introduced this at all. So we brought tahine and chamoy uh, oh, yeah, yeah. liquid. I, I probably butchered that. For the mango. And he came up, and he's like, all right, put that in the glass, pour the Uno Mas on top of that, and then add the sh- tahine on top of it, and then chug it. And I was like, all right. And it was delicious. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is a lot of fun. Well, then every person after that ordered those hot ones. Like, we went through, I was like, that, that cake's gone. Like, it was so fast. <laughs> so I, I have to introduce it here at the tap room still because we haven't done that yet. But it's something that, you know, allows it to be a little bit more authentic and kind of fun. And so. I like a rim of tahini. I've had that before in some yeah. places. Yeah, uh, we, we uh, the Uno Mas, our, our bartender was sick the day of Tico de Mayo. That was going to be uh, rimmed with tahini. Uh, and done that way. So yeah, we used to do that. Actually, we did it at the Texas restaurant trade show when I when I worked at Bottoms Up. Okay. We poured a beer after we rimmed it with lime juice and then put it in the tahini nice. and had it like that. And then they would pour hot sauce in it because it's yeah. Texas and you know. Love that. That's actually yeah. We should start doing some more of that. It's just getting everybody on board to. I mean, to, you're in a small town as yeah, opposed to yeah. us in, like, Indy and Fishers. So it's like some, some of the people were like, yeah, let's do it. And other people were like, no, let's not do that. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Keep the fruit out of my beer, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you interested into in brewing? Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, the story is kind of funny because I think now if you would ask her, uh, she would go back and take it all back. But uh, <laughs> my wife and I started dating in, in August of 2014. So our first Christmas together was, like, four months in. And I went all Harry Potter for her, and she went all beer for me. So I got two homebrew kits and uh, what is that called? Like a, a tasting, not a tasting glasses. It was like a pint glass. It was like a, a wheat glass, a goblet. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, It was like a set, like a six glasses. And uh, it took me a year before I even brewed the first batch because I lived in a small apartment in Muncie at Ball State. And uh, her father-in-law, or my father-in-law, her dad, was like, hey, you have those beer kits? And I was like, yeah. He's like, we should, we should do one while you're on fall break. All right, whatever. Were, were they like Mr. Beer Kits, or they were was it like Brook, Brook fermentation? It was Brooklyn type? Brew Co. Okay, yeah, It yeah, was yeah. a small one-gallon kit. It was yeah. an all-grain kit. Um, okay. I had that book. When I used to do yeah. home brewing, I had that there book. Go. That yeah. book was awesome. The book was great. Yeah. Uh, it was like the third purchase from them after I got that kit. But, uh, yeah, they made awesome products, and I had um, a, a starter kit with a recipe and then another recipe to go with that. Um, and so we brewed it on a Friday night. And we just loved it. We were like, this is so cool. We hadn't even drank anything yet. The next day, we brewed our second batch. And two days later, we brewed our third batch. <laughs> and we had, literally haven't drank anything yet. Um, and we just kind of dove in, and it, it just took off. And by, like, the third beer, I had a homebrew name. Um, we were, had a logo. It All was right, just, what was the homebrew name? So my, my last name is Moon, and my wife's last name is Northquest before, she was mar- before we got married. So we took the north from that part and Moon, and we was North Moon Brewing. Okay. Um, and the logo was Mo- Moon Quest would have also been a Moon pretty Quest would have been thing. cool too, <laughs> yep. yeah. And it's spelled Q U I S T, or yeah, Q U I S T. Okay. So it's like it's like the like the Sweden like Quest Quest. Uh, so that would have been fun. Moon yeah. Quest. Yeah, it would been it been fun. Um, and so it just took off. That next Christmas, I got the five gallon stuff from Great Fermentations. Uh, that next July, so six months after I brewed, we got kegs, uh, and we just it it developed into a very nasty habit. Uh, where I started funneling all my hobbies. My, my golfing money went there. My gaming money went there. My fishing money went there. Um, at this point right now, I have a 20-gallon electric three-vessel system. So this equipment you're seeing from Blickman, I have 20-gallon versions of this in my garage. Jeez. And then I have this in seven gallons in my garage. 
and I have enough kegerator space for 16 beers on top of my house. So it became a nasty habit, guys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a habit. It's at a great. A certain point. It's a great. No, it's it's not. It that's was, bigger than Grissom Brothers. Yeah, it's. It, like, I mean, I could open a small brewery out of my garage if I could I, keep up. I was gonna I say, really, yeah, you're running a brewery. Yeah, and that's kind of what it became during COVID. Like, uh, you know, I I'm a teacher as a day job, and uh, when school closed, my wife was a nurse, and so we went from not seeing each other to never seeing each other. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, I teach three days a week from virtually from my couch and then i'm gonna brew the rest so um i definitely brewed over the legal limit i could have in my house in that year and it became a thing where my friends were buying gift cards to the homebrew stores in exchange for growler fills because they couldn't go to like the breweries like they normally would and it was like the garage door would open i'd put a milk crate of four growlers out there a gift card would show up <laughs> And I just brewed and brewed and brewed and brewed and brewed. I don't know where the beer went. So. No, no. And so it just kept going. And, and that's really where I dug in and developed some of these recipes that I was really passionate about and really um, dug in and learned really what I was doing is during 2020. So. so did you go to, have you performed in any of like the homebrew competitions or any of the festivals that had homebrew cups and stuff like that? Yeah. So I didn't, so I did Indiana Brewers Cup two times, 2018 and 2021. Um, my Amber Ale, which we were supposed to be brewing today, um, which I'm glad we didn't since we're in here br- hanging out, um, took t- silver at a 42 in 2018. Okay. And then in 2021, um, an international pale lager, which is currently in Tank 2 right behind you in Merlin, um, it took gold in 21. And then I'm really into mixed fermentation beers. Um, I actually have one in the barrel that's directly behind me here. Um, that recipe took first and third in the mixed fermentation category that year as well. So I have four medals so far as a home brewer. I'm entering 10 beers this year as a professional brewer. Um, and then I, I would go around with my homebrew club and donate growlers to festivals that we poured at as a homebrew club. What is the homebrew club? Matt mentioned it, and I don't remember what yeah, it was. Yeah, it's MASH Homebrew Club in Fort Wayne. Okay. So we have about uh, 60 active members. Um, but if you really look back to it, um, Science Project... Two Tom's Brewing, Dot and Line, Fortlandia, Matt Anthony, uh, Summit City, uh, Junk Ditches Brewer, who else? Auburn Brewing Company. They all were former members of us. So I thought of this on the way up here, and I think it'll be a fun question that we ask every interview. Yeah. If your home brewery didn't exist and your actual science project brewery didn't exist, what beer would be in your refrigerator as your staple beer? As a staple beer? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Uh, so I'm going to give you two. The first one is something I, get, I can get very easily accessible. Accessible. It sounds weird I said that. Um, and that's two-hearted. Okay. And the reason that is is I can, you can get it anywhere. Gas station, Walmart, yeah. uh, liquor store. And it's good. If I, I'm in Fort Wayne, so I'm only two hours and 15 minutes from the brewery. Um, I think in that area, we get some hella fresh two-hearted. Um, and it's just an easy nine dollar six pack. Like it goes down great. I love I love that beer. If I would have to go something that's a little bit harder to get for me, um, it's gonna be anything from Burial in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. Um, I'm a huge Burial fan. Stouts, hazies, all that stuff. Um, so any and and I have a ton of that in my fridge right now because I buy it and have it send to Dayton. So it's really bad. Uh, but that's probably the two. Like any of their Imperial Stouts from Burial. So the or two hearts of the world. Oh, it's Imperial Stout. Yeah. Yeah. He said the magic word. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get one of these. Uh, honestly, there may be one in the fridge we can share in a little bit, if you guys okay. would like, because I think I have one here. T- twist my arm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, the first five episodes, two of them or three of them were <laughs> Every other episode. Well, that's when so. I, I started, like, so you guys came up here and got those bottles. I reached out. You guys came and got it. And then I started looking at the episodes, and I was like, they do a lot of this style. <laughs> and then, like, when you guys started the episode, you're like, and another, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, they do do a lot of these styles." Well, we so. started in January, so what yeah. else are we gonna fucking drink? Yeah, and that's what for me, like uh, those and the sours uh, is what I'm probably the most proud of. But we're producing right now, just because the flavors stand out. You know, I like I kind of it bothers me sometimes when I go places and I get a beer and they're like, "It has this in it," and I'm like, "Where are you finding that?" It always bothers us. <laughs> yeah, Don't worry. it's like where are you finding that? And so like I try to push, and you know, and like one of you guys, who's the cinnamon, the cinnamon guy? Yeah, so like. Th- th- that life of the Marty is probably over cinnamon this year. Like you could almost chew that cinnamon. Yeah, it was it was tough. <laughs> it was tough, uh, and and it, it it's it's kind of drying it out a little bit at this point now. And um, so when you said that, I was like, oh, 
this is going to be real bad for him if he can <laughs> if he can actually taste it. Um, it's like I don't mind. I like cinnamon. Yeah, but it's literally been a thing. Yeah, like it we was a thing for it on the original on the original version of the show that they'd be like, here's cinnamon, and he'd be like, man, it's got good cinnamon. I'm like, I don't fucking taste yeah, anything. Yeah, it's not there. And then and then with yours, I'm like, oh my god, like that is <laughs> yeah. cinnamon. Maybe I broke you. Maybe it's maybe we well, need to try again. <laughs> so then so then right after that we we went to deviate. Okay. And they had a cinnamon beer, and I tasted it, and I, that's did. what I said to him. I'm like, I'm like, I think that beer, like, it like broke you. It's like, you're, you're, thank you. You're it gonna enjoy this. Him. Yes, yeah. It was either that or the COVID recently. <laughs> that we just did the Demi completely Gordon. broke everything. Did you I, did the Demi Gorgon that you could taste that too? Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I felt like it was three beers recently yeah. that all Ooh, of a sudden I'm like, why can't I taste cinnamon? I'm blaming the COVID on that. <laughs> it it just it unlocked the cinnamon profile on my taste buds. Let's jump into the second beer, because this one's going to be fun, uh, <laughs> because it is a smoothie sour, and if you're not a new listener, you sure as hell know what our thoughts on our smoothie <laughs> sours. And, I uh, learned that today. And so, it's not a bad thing, but I, I'm waiting for the one that's just like, oh shit, this, this is it. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah. And so far, we've not found it. And, and and like I, I kind of agree. I mean, like I'm not gonna chase these beers. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I I met the guys from Hoosier. I love those guys. They're super chill. But like, it's one of those things. It is. It is. It to me, it's a dessert. Like when I when I have these, I go get a Hoosier can. I pour eight ounces in my glass. Eight ounces in my wife's glass. We drink it, and that's our dessert. But at the end of the day, it is a huge hype right now, and we got to put butts in seats. That that's what pays the bills, man. So. You know, very much inspired by like the Hoosier, the Hop Lore kind of sours. We kind of play. So, so what? What exactly is this? What's so it this is Mango Fiesta. It? Um, it is mango puree, mango ice cream, and uh, marshmallow fluff. Marshmallow so, fluff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how we do our sour, our smoothie sours here is we brew a big base batch, and we split it between. So we can be, we can get four barrels in our fermenters. Um, we split it between two two barrel batches. So, what's um, the base? Is it a Berliner? Yeah, it's a no. Berliner. Yeah, kettle. I was gonna it's, say. So that's because I'm picking up some some actual beer in this. Yeah, and some sourness. And when yeah. you said it was mango, it's like okay, mango's not tart like this. No. It's not sour. No, like yeah, this, yeah. So, so it's, yeah, it's a it's a kettle sour base. Um, we use um, Philly sour now instead of kettle souring it because uh, it, whole, the whole process. If you guys know what that like. The kettle souring, you're like leaving it in there for two days at 100 degrees, and it sours, and you boil it to kill that off. We're actually able to do it on this side with the Philly sour yeast, um, so we don't have to hold our kettle up for two days just because we can't keep up that way if that's what the hell it was working. So, yeah, one of the beers we did from Hoosier was a Philly sour, and we that was know. the day we learned. Yeah, that was the day we learned what the hell a Philly sour was. Yeah, so it was a. If you did not know, do you know where the yeast comes from? Philadelphia, but they found it in a log. Oh, uh, I was gonna say it was developed. Like yeah, founder. it was from Philly, yeah. but it was found in a log in Philadelphia, and that's where the Philly sour comes from. So, um, earthy, <laughs> earthy, yeah. <laughs> so they have two yeast sour right now. They have sour VC and uh, Philly sour. So, I'd say the one thing with this is it doesn't give me a smoothie vibe, based on what we've had previously, based yeah. on. The slushy series, the Hoosier, and and the Mortalis that we just um, Mortalis was thick. That as we all just yeah, yeah. Where all of those were like yeah, like kind of thick, chunky. This one is more. It's a little thinner. Thin, yeah. I I was gonna say it's almost like a. I don't want to like say a anything. filtered version. Well, of I was it. just gonna mm-hmm. say it's almost like drinking like orange juice or something. Like Sunny it's got D. that it's got yeah. that same color to it, and like that's not. I'm not trying to say that like in a negative way. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out. Descriptive words that my it, brain can figure it, out. It also might be a little bit because uh, we when it goes in kegs and instead of cans, because you, your Mortellus was a can, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys rolled that before you poured it. So same thing happens on our kegs. If we don't go and shake those kegs, the fruit settles to the bottom. That makes You'll sense. You'll have one that's crazy chunky, and then it'll create a pit, and that pit will just, they'll just pull beer through it. So you might have it, it might get thicker a little bit. I mean, even like you look at the glasses, like mine was the last poured, and I have you have a rim on yours too, but like it gets like, if we shake our kegs or roll the kegs, it it does thicken up pretty, um, pretty heavily. The first thing I thought when I took a drink originally before you got back in here, I said this reminds me of like a a tart Sunny D. Yeah, and I'm not mad about it because I love Sunny D. I love mango. 
and there's a nice tartness from the beer or from yeah. the original base beer. And I think that's my biggest complaint about those two is like, you know, there a lot of those beers you do lose the base beer in. Oh yeah. Um and and, and it's it and like I said, it is what it is. It it is a hype game right now, you know, but at the end of the day, like I don't want so some times they come out and I, they're not sour either. And I'm like, okay, so was this a wheat beer that you just, just have really fruit in? Yeah. No, just juice. Just juice. So it's like we had a bananas foster one on and we can yeah, maybe I was gonna say I'm pretty mad that that one's gone. So it's it's just untapped. There's a little bit in there, and we can probably pour some in a little bit. Before. I saw that on the list, and I was so excited. Yeah. And then we heard yeah. someone else who had so, ordered it, and they're like, "Oh, that's out." And I'm like, "Yeah, I just untapped it today to put the pineapple Dole Whip one of this on." And so we could probably tap. I, I gotta fill some growlers of that for tomorrow. Is what I'm doing. I'm taking those. I think there's probably about a gallon or two gallons left of it. But like, like what happens is they they when they're served they get real thick on the bottom of the keg and then you start pouring like just puree yeah and so at that point we pull them off and we're done because you know one wants just puree i mean it's good it's just like fruit but who knows how much alcohol is in there or any base beer so i struggle with the word smoothie being put in it yeah. to be honest just because none of this to me looks like a smoothie yeah, yeah. if you said this was a mango berlin or vice that fucking nails it. Yeah, and that doesn't set. Well, up in that a, case, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I no, think, I think I and we can check it before the, you leave today to make sure. I I bet you if we go and shake that keg a little bit more, uh, I bet you it gets thicker. Okay, so it's one of those things again. Like we, we just you know I poured it off the tap real quick to do this and. Um, well, I didn't know that that was a thing to be honest. Yeah, personally. So well, I mean, it, so it's just like orange juice. Like it settles out when it's cold. Um. So when we make these, we like have to actively move that fruit around during caking because if not it fills up at the bottom and then so what happens if you get like uh like one of those boards that moves humans side to side Dude, to keep their feet that's exactly moving? what we've talked about exactly like, what we're talking about we also <laughs> talked about so like we fill a lot of these half barrels and we started we started doing six stools for like uh distribution and um events we talked about getting enough six stools that we could just do six stools of this where every night we would untap them and set them upside down and then they would fill them over. Yeah. But like these filled, <laughs> our, our bartenders aren't filling these over. <laughs> like, yeah, our server's know. not picking that up. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not at all. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of where we fall into. You know, I want to start canning these off when we're when we're kegging them because so I think they're gonna stay thick and you could roll them like Hoosier. Um, it's just we're getting to that point. So as you can see, we have a full pallet of cans back here and a brand new shiny toy here. Um, uh, we're getting there. We're just not there yet. So tell us a little bit about science project. How how did you make that transition from uh small town small town uh uh home brewer? I, I feel like calling him a home brewer is like small it, town. It's almost like an insult when you have a <laughs> small brewery in your garage. Small town brewery in your garage. Yeah, yeah. no, it was a home brewer. It's and what's fun is I still have. The, I mean, we're bigger here. I mean, we're, we're, I went from five ten gallon gatches to patches to one hundred and ten. So. I did take a jump. I mean, that's, that is a jump. But uh, I still have that some of that mentality. Like, when I mean, all, even on these beers here, you had a Mexican lager, and you're going to end with a porter, but you had a, a heavily mango beer in the middle and the Rocky Road Imperial Stout after that. After that. So I saw that mentality. I love, I love taking a risk. I love trading things that people are like, that shouldn't work. And sometimes they don't. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm, I, I have some ones that are not where I want them to be, but it works enough to – get it out and know that, okay, hey, this is what I'm going to do next time. We did a, a wine barrel-aged chocolate, ch- white chocolate strawberry beer for Valentine's Day. And tasting it yesterday, it's been off tap for almost three weeks now because I pulled it to can it. Yesterday it was phenomenal. But I pulled it off because I wasn't happy with it. And it's just like it just took time to sit and age and age out, whatever it is. But, yeah, so we kind of – I met Tim Eaton, who's the owner of this place, through a mutual friend, and he offered me – to come on and do this and originally i said no i was like i don't I, I i love what i do teaching wise and i was honestly very hesitant about it so then it became a thing where he's like well help me help me get started like you know help me plan out a brew room you know what i need you know kind of thing and why while i look for a brewer and then i kind of just kept thinking i'm like well if this works and i am not part of it i'll really kick myself in the butt <laughs> about that um and so that's kind of where it started and i was like hey you know if, if you can help me out with this, this and that I, I'm willing to come on as a head brewer, and he he was like, "Yeah, let's let's do it." So uh, I've been brewer since day one. Uh, we brought an assistant, Mike Duke, on. He was here for batch one, but he wasn't officially assistant until batch four or five. Um, he runs the coffee shop kitchen across the street from us, so he works there in the mornings. He comes over about one o'clock, gets us started here, 
and then we're done by eight thirty nine o'clock every night when we brew. So, yeah, that's how it worked when, out. When did this place officially open? We opened the very last weekend of August of last year. And how long did it take you to get oh. to that point? Uh, we bought this building. Well, we offered on this building St. Patty's Day of 21. Oh, wow. We didn't get it close until August of 21 because of right up this hill behind our outdoor section, there's an old cleaners. And our water, the EPA was out here testing our water multiple times, and they didn't like how it came out a couple times. So they came back and came back. It was a delay, a delay, a delay. They finally closed in August of 21. Started flipping us automatically. Um, and then we were probably done flipping it in like April, May ish, but it took a little while to get approved to start brewing. So we brewed our first batch July 8th of 22. What did this used to be? It used to be like an automotive shop that originally. Yeah, I'm not sure originally. And it was all open back here where the bath, I'm not sure if you guys went to the bathrooms or not, but up mm-hmm. that area was like a, like a, it was framed off and it was like a, a, a service desk. Yep. Everything back here was open. And bef- between the two, um, the service shop and then us, there was a guy who owned the building, and he uh, did some sort of, like, car detail cleaning, like, salesman. So he had all that merchandise just sitting in here, and he would deliver it around the state of Indiana. With Science Project, where did, I guess, where did Science Project come from? Come from? So when, we, when I partnered up with Tim, he, he had already been thinking about this for a while, and he uh, had some ideas. Um, and it was kind of like, you know, coming into someone else's vision. Um, I kind of, I, I, we, we kind of wanted to come together on a shared vision. And so we talked one day and we were like, Hey, let but we come together and really look at what craft beer means to each other. And we kind of came back to it's, it's, it's science. Like people are doing classic lagers or classic styles. People are doing smoothie sours and now the seltzers and all this other random stuff. So we're like, okay, so it's a science. Every, every batch is a science project. And then. He was like, well, you're an elementary school science teacher, and here's Science Project. What if we call it Science Project? And I'm like, okay, I like the name, but, like, what would our logo be? And so we started looking at that, and we're like, oh, well, what's the two most common science projects? Well, volcanoes and rockets. <laughs> and it kind of just fit that, like, you know, he kind of was like, hey, you know, you, you're kind of like the volcano. Where you're more grounded, and you're looking to explode on the beer game. And I'm more like the rocket with these ideas that were flying around, and and it just stuck. And it was like, whoa, okay. So I'm not sure if you've seen the artwork for Hop Rocket, which is our American IPA. That was our original artwork. So the rocket was a hop cone. It was like burnt off on the ends because of like the flames. And we just decided that was a little bit much for an actual logo. So we toned it down to our uh, logo that we have now with the rocket and the volcano. So as far as breweries go, whenever I travel, mm-hmm. most of the time I gravitate towards blah, blah, blah artisanal ales or yeah. something project so honestly if i was traveling i would intentionally come here because yeah. generally those are the places that do different things yeah absolutely so think side project social project which we've talked about on the show we've got you know prairie artisanal ales yeah, yeah. Uh, perennial artisan ales those tend to be the places that do like off the wall shit and make it work yeah so make yeah. fun shit that also can still make a beer. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that's kind of where I'm at on this. Like, I don't want to brew, like, that's why we don't have house beers. Like, you mentioned that, or like, what, what's a house beer we need to try? Our cream ale, literally, like, in that bright tank right behind us, uh, we'll keg it on Monday, we'll tap it on Friday, and I can guarantee you it doesn't make it to 4th of July. Like, if, if we're lucky, it lasts that month. You know what I mean? Um, I brew it once a month right now. I brew our American IPA, the Hop Rocket, once a month right now. So that's closest we're going to have the house beers, but... As a brewer, I hate the idea of brewing the same beer all the time. Like, hate it. You sound like Sean. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not what I want to do. I understand it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, my craft beer game started at Sun King, and I love that I could go get the same two beers I always fuck on with uh, down there. But it's just I, I want to be challenged. I want to change people's palates. I want you to come in and be like, well, I drank this last time. What can I drink now? So we always will have something light, dark, hoppy, sour, you know, you more unique, always on tap. And then depending on what goes first or what comes, we might have two darks or two hoppies or two loggers or two lights or whatever else. So that's kind of how we do it here. Um, I'm not sure if you've been to Fort Wayne, like Fortlandia and Fort Wayne is a small one barrel brew house. That's kind of how they've done it. And it's really been successful for them. And they have beers that when they return, they sell the entire one barrel batch in a weekend. We're doing three and a half barrels. We're not really selling out in a weekend, but it's, it works for us. 
I think you'd have a fun collab if you were to go work with Sean at Copacetic for yeah. dark beers. Something dark. Okay. Because Sean is, to I'll shoot, be fair, I'll shoot my shot. I have no problem with that. To be fair, I mean, we can shoot a shot for you, too. <laughs> uh, but Sean makes some of the most, like, insane dark beers. Yeah. We had, uh, he had an Espresso Mercules that we still dream about. And then <laughs> originally, when he was at Flat 12, he created the... Uh, uh, the pinko maple barrel okay. that was in local maple uh, syrup barrels. Nice. Okay. Oh my god. Like, yeah, I I need to get over there. Every you're not the only one that told me that. They're like when they come they come and they talk to me about beer. They're like, have you met the guy at Copacetic? And I'm like, you know, it's basically in my backyard. It just here. feels very similar. Yeah, like, and it, and I just haven't gotten over there yet. So this summer is my first summer here that I'm not trying to get batches done to open a brewery. So I plan on, you know, taking longer lunch breaks, maybe sneaking over there or, you know, leaving, uh, cutting out a little bit early and going over there and having some beers. So it sounds like, honestly, that could just be a fun podcast yeah. where <laughs> we just sit down like an old school, let's just drink some beer and talk. Yeah. I would love not that. like, not like interview, but like the four of us just sitting down and just talking that actually. I could seriously. And this is why, like when you guys, when I, you started commenting on our summer stuff and I, I saw your page and I was like, oh, this is a podcast. Like I want to reach out to these guys because I can talk. I can talk beer all day long. I love beer. I love what it's about. I love the environment that it creates, um, and I love what you guys are trying to accomplish. Like it's the same thing as a brewer, man. Like I went from home brewing to this. Like I'm trying to become those guys that I that I want to be. But it's cool to see you guys. But I'm gonna make a show where all I do is talk about beer, and I'm gonna try my best to get followers and that kind of. And I, I'm about that. Like I'm like, you know. It could be it could be dog awful, but it, the the idea that you guys it are is. trying to do it no, it, I, I, but trust me, I have an hour and a half drive here every day. I listen to a lot of your stuff. I listen to a lot of drinking and geek out. Um, I've Good listened dudes. to the sour hour Definitely way too many to times, you know. Um, and so it's like it's it, it's it's about making it, and that's what that's what I'm about. So like when you guys were like, oh, you know, I, I didn't respond to uh, the email fast enough on Instagram. I was typing an email or a message to you guys as I was looking at the episode. And you're like, that bad, huh? And I was like, no, I feel like an a-hole. Like, not at all. Like, it's your opinion, man. And, and I go to places and I'm like, this beer's not for me. I've gone to some places that, like, I've been super hype about. And I'm like, this one's not it. And, I, and that's, yeah. that's my own personal opinion. And that's totally fine. And, and, and you might go there and be like, hey, this beer's the best beer there. And I'm like, okay. Like, again, your personal opinion, not where I'm at. But at the end of the day, it's still craft beer. It's still what people are about. It's still that it grouping, that environment that people have created. Um, to me, that's just one of a kind. It's where I want to be. So, um, and that's how I always have been. You know, like, tell me what you like, and I'm going to go have that. And I'm going to have something that it's not told to me to have. And if I went somewhere, I, I mean, there's a guy in the homebrew club. He's one of the guys at Portland. And now he made a Gordetta's, Gordetta's beer, like the chips, like the bagel Ooh, chips. And it was dog awful. But if you go and have any of his weird stuff he releases at the Portlandia, it's fire every time. I buy every one of the bottles because his stuff is just so interesting. And he's willing to risk that. You know, he does like a a maple syrup, uh, what is it, Scottish beer that he barrel ages and like he just does weird shit and it hits. So it's like one of those things where it's like I'm about the environment. I'm about like what it is and what it's about in the industry and all that stuff. So. Um, I love what you, you know. What you guys are doing in the podcast. I love being part of it. I don't have the time to sit here and talk about beer, like you know, all the time. But when I get the opportunity to, I'm gonna, I'm going to. So, so yeah. I do. Uh, we were looking at the list here, um, and there's a lot of collaboration beers. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about one. What your like interest in collaboration beers, where it came from, and why, and then like how does a collaboration beer work with you guys? Yeah. So. Well, first and foremost, um, something that I was introduced early on in the homebrewing. So I started homebrewing, um, and then I happened to be, I worked for the Walmart Corporation for 10 years before I started teaching and before I started doing this. And I worked in a warehouse up in Auburn, Indiana. And I was in the break room one day talking about the the, the most recent beer I brewed. And a lady who, um, I think she did maintenance there, like walks up and was like, hey, come with me real quick. Meet my husband. I was like, okay. <laughs> and he worked in an office there and she's like hey this kid home brews and you home brew and he's like oh cool man we start talking about it he's like why don't you come over for a brew day and so i took a notebook with me over there um and he did he brewed a different brew style than i did so i brewed at the time all grain uh, like mash ton and boil kettle and he did what was called brewing a bag so he put a bag yeah. in dumped it in pulled all the grain out in that bag 
I took one note that entire day, and my note was, what the fuck? <laughs> because he did everything different than I did. But every beer I had on tap at his house was phenomenal. And I was like, what is going on? And so I started researching why he did this or why he did that. And um, ultimately, it came to a point that like every time I would go and brew with somebody, I, I wouldn't say anything about what I was doing, like anything. I'm like, well, how do you do this? I'm like, oh, yeah, I did this way. And I just would take it all in, and I, I realized it's just like cooking. You know, if I invited, sent out a message to Indiana and said, hey, I want to have every person that, sm- that smokes meats in Indiana come up here and have a contest. And I said, you must tell me how you're going to do the meat before we do it. There's going to be 200 different options. It's the exact same way with brewing. And so for me, the collaborations is you get together with, with people who are likely-minded with you, and you do a task that we do daily, but we all do different. So it's cool to see, one, the different systems, two, the different styles of doing stuff, um, three, the different beliefs. I mean, like how, you know, you know, people sometimes will sanitize things that don't need to be sanitized or, they, you know, just different things that like the, the nitpickiness of brewers is stupid. Um, you know, before I touch anything with my actual hands, I sanitize my hands. It, it, it could not even be boiled yet. And boiling kills everything. But I may, like, it's just who I am. Um, and so it's just kind of one of those things where, like, uh, to me, I'm still a home brewer. You know, I've only been doing this for nine months or ten months, whatever it is now. Um, so when you look at the collaboration list I have out there, um, some of those breweries are, are brewers or big-name people. I mean, um, we have two on. Well, we did have two on. Last, we had one now. Uh, with Tom from Two Toms, who I've looked up to my entire homebrewing career. Loved what he's doing. Um, and then we have one at Brokerage. We wanted to do a, our first stylized IPA, and they learned all about it. I knew nothing about it. I just went over there and brewed with them. We threw our name on it. Um, and then Brandon Holder from Tarnish Hollow, who's getting ready to open in Elwood. I met him through a couple of beer festivals, and I just love what he does and what he's thinking about doing. And so we've done a collabs with him. So really, I kind of just shoot my shot. It's kind of <laughs> like... Uh, you know, hey, the big, the, you know, the, the big brother and, you know, what can I do with you? So, um, you know, I was texting Stefan from Hoplore this today on my way over here being like, hey, man, like, you want to do a collab? Like, got all summer long and, you know, those guys and just being able to brew with these people that I've looked up to this whole time and throw names together. And, you know, some of these guys, when we brew together, you know, they're like, oh, man, like, I had this of yours, love that. And it's just like, oh, dude, it's such an honor. <laughs> like, you know, bow down. Like, I'm, I'm still young gun in this kind of thing. And, um, just having fun, and so it's cool to be at a brew with some people like that. This third beer is a collab, right? Correct. All yeah, right, so tell us Brandon. a little bit about it. So uh, that was our third collaboration with Brandon from Tarnish Hollow. Um, we decided we wanted to do a stout series, um, and we went with ice cream. We lo- we love both both of us are big guys, big be- big bearded guys, and so we we're like, oh, let's do an ice cream series. So we called it Melting Crematorium. Crematorium is a C R E A M, like cream instead of like burning <laughs> bodies. And uh, so we started doing with ice cream stouts. So our first one was Rocky Road, and we uh, aged it on uh, chocolate ice cream mix um, and then hit it with marshmallow and then almond extract to get the flavors that we were shooting for. So It smells exactly like a chocolate ice cream cone, and even the cone part, too. <laughs> it honestly it smells delightful. Like, it smells like ice cream. It it reminds me a lot of, and I know this is sort of the opposite of what you're going for, but uh, a malt ball, okay, like a Whopper. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. when I was drinking it and stuff, I'm like, man, this has that kind of malty, which I mean is, I guess, ice cream. I don't really yeah. understand what the hell malt is, but <laughs> you know, malt ice cream is pretty good. So it's yeah. it's kind of like that too. Malt liquor, you know, that's good too. Malt liquor, <laughs> <laughs> not what we're shooting for. In this beer. <laughs> um, but yeah. It smells. It smells amazing. It's very beautiful. Uh, we've been here for quite a what is it, forty forty seven minutes on here plus whatever time before that. Yeah, it's still got head to it. So that means there's nice carbonation. I mean, the taste is is really really good. It's a lot easier for me to to talk about this one since because you're a fat bearded guy too. I'm a fat bearded guy <laughs> who likes ice cream. Yeah, dude. I know exactly Aren't what's going all? on here. Uh, So what stands out to me in this beer is my kid loves to eat those stupid cake cones. Okay. The like small kid. No, the like small kid cake cones that are like 
this big and like uh, okay. what you would get with a traditional like DQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. They they wrap in paper and then he has yeah. to wrap the paper off of it. If you take a bite of a chocolate ice cream in that cone, it's almost the exact same flavor profile. And I think the almond extract brings that out. I but it brings that. out like a like that cake cone flavor too. So if uh, y'all want to go drink some good beer here and then go next door or nearby, I'm guessing there's an ice cream yeah, shop yeah, nearby. There was one that we passed on the way here. Probably like Dairy Sister or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I grew up in Greencastle, small town, much like Logan's Port, and we have Dairy Castle, not Dairy Love Queen. That. Well, so. I'll tell you what, man. I There was a time I was leaving here, and it was, it was snowing kind of heavy, and I was already on edge about driving an hour and a half in the snow, and I come up to like cars completely stopped and i'm like what in god's name people start going around and so i'm moving up and then this next car will go around i move up and what's going on here uh the wendy's officially opened in logansport (laughs) and the line was out on the main road like 40 cars deep boys and i was like guys you realize it's wendy's they're not giving away any free stuff it's wendy's uh they were they were excited that line went that line was like days long I mean, we got a B-dubs in Greencastle a few years back, and I swear to you, it's the busiest place in the city. And I'm like, you know the service is shitty, right? Like, every <laughs> single B-dubs. <laughs> and the wings are average. I do frequent it, but there is better wing places. I mean, we I'm lucky to have Ale Emporium right in my backyard. Oh, so there's also a B-dubs, spoil, but there's no fucking man. way I'm going to B-dubs if I have Ale Emporium right oh, there, right? Dude. Oh, What's it? Oh. I'm not even gonna go I could walk there. to Ale Emporium. I would be skinny if I lived that close to home. No, I guess I, I would eat a lot of wings, but I would be skinnier <laughs> if, if I lived walk? that close to wings. Yeah. So I got kind of two questions. One yeah. was actually about um, the cream ale that you mentioned. It, yeah. You said that uh, you brew enough that it basically lasts you about a month. Mm-hmm. And you said it's a three-barrel system. So how how many in keg-wise in this uh, whatever you called this? Half barrel. Half barrel. I can never remember any of this <laughs> stuff anymore. I know it's not a six-barrel. So how many of those do you get out of a three, three and a half barrel yeah. system? So we're a three and a half. Uh, I push it a little bit to try to get more just because I, you do lose some with yeast and stuff. I normally get uh six full and hopefully a seven, like a seventh, like three quarters, if not all the way full. Um, it's about 826 pints. So for, okay. for your, uh, just quick math, a, a half barrel is a half barrel. I just can't remember <laughs> how many, how many like gallons is a barrel. It's been 31. way too long since I've done this. So 31. Okay, so I talk that shit all day at work. So we, I, have I, was to we say, brew, I do not anymore. We brew so. uh, about 115, 120 gallon batches, and we finish with 110 gallons of finished beer. So, so okay. fun, a fun little side tangent. I actually found out that Science Project was a brewery and existed because I scrolled past it in my company's like profiles because I work for Next Glass slash Untapped, and you guys use Osner yeah. for some of your releases. And I was like, what Indiana breweries are in here? And I was like, what the fuck is Science Project? Yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. Uh, I'm going to have to check it out now. Yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah. We, um, Tom at two times uses Ozar, yeah. or Ozar, Ozar, how do you say it? Um, and so I started using it as a, so really how, the reason I do use it is it, it lets me get some pre-orders going. But yep. um, I am basically a proxy for Fort Wayne. So anybody I meet that was in Fort Wayne area, I'm like, hey, if you use me as a proxy, I'll bring it back for you as long as you order it online and pay for it online. Because <laughs> then it's legal. Um or legal, or Ish. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Um, Legal legalese, but it lets my friends in Fort Wayne buy my stuff and support me without having to come all the way over here because it, it's a trek, and I, I'm I'm over here three nights a week, so why not just? I mean, I would just bring it back and have them give me cash, and but that's technically bootlegging, and we're not gonna get into that whole thing. So that's my way of doing it: is I release it on pre order, and they buy it and pay for it online through the app, and then I um they put me as a proxy and I bring it back over there. So. Like Life of the Marty, I think I took thirty six bottles back, and um, Rocky Road's been on there for four or five days now, and I'm already at thirty two bottles going back to Fort Wayne. So I, you guys are pretty heavy users then. Yeah. Uh, so, as far, so as far as uh, proxies are concerned, you're probably super stoked now that you can proxy for anybody. That's a new update mm-hmm. where like you can be as many proxies as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's th- thankfully that's that's kind of a a newer thing, and I never ran into that issue here. I ran into an issue when I was going to be using it for Indianapolis. Someone uses it in Indy, and I was going down to pick up four packs down there uh, during, it might have been during the COVID time. I uh, can't remember who it is. But I know 18th Street did for a while. It might have been them. I was going down, and they and I, and I people placed, like I had friends placed orders, 
Sun King has it. Um, yeah. Shit. Uh, two Toms has it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are the only ones that I'm aware of in indie, but that doesn't mean they don't. But I know I, I just ran into an issue down there where it was like I couldn't proxy for yeah. everybody. And That's then people, new now. Yeah, now people start can, complaining, mm-hmm. and then uh, it didn't happen for when we were doing the bottles here, so that was thankful. The other question I had was you mentioned this Rocky Road Stout that you aged it on chocolate mix. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? Like, it, A, what is chocolate mix? And then what does it mean to age something? Yeah, so, like, the typical age thing that you hear is, like, barrel-wise, right? You age in a whiskey barrel, age in a bourbon barrel, whatever. Um, we do it right here in the stainless steel. Yep. So, but I always, anything that I age on, it has a minimum of seven days. I, I, it can go longer, but it has to go seven days for me. That's just a personal thing that, like, I'm going to say I aged it on it. I'm going to give it some time to eat up what's going on in there. So, uh, long story short, we buy chocolate ice cream powder. We get uh, boiling water out of our hot liquor tank. We add it to a bucket, and we use a drill with a paint mixer, and we blend that into a liquid ice cream form, and we add it to the beer. So we shoot it in with a bright tank, uh, or not a bright tank, a, a yeast brink. Um, shoot it in there so we don't have any CO2 or oxygen issues. Shoot it in there. We let it sit in there for a couple of days. Uh, and then we cold crash it. Then obviously that ice cream gets colder, becomes thicker, and it falls to the bottom with the yeast. And then we pull off the top of that. So okay, that's so kind of that, how we done it the best. Is that technically conditioning versus aging? Uh, if we wanted to get technical, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So we, and because like the mango, like it's only, I mean, it's, it's that ice cream ends up in the kegs the way we do it. Um, so technically it's aging in the kegs, but yeah, it's probably more conditioning than it is. I probably should reword that conditioned with. So what happens if we want to make ice cream with the leftovers from the keg? Oh, you probably totally could do it. I think <laughs> was it Cedar Creek down there where they at Martinsville. I think uh, they have an ice somewhere. Yeah, yeah. They have an ice cream machine that I think they use their beer somehow. That's, smart. That's Kevin. And Tom and Tom did it too. Yeah, we could probably you could probably do that. I mean, I just let it. I mean, we clean it out and we send it down the drain at that point. But uh, yeah, so it's probably more conditioned. I I like that. I could probably change the term on that than <laughs> age. That's that's more professional on that. So because it does not age that long on there, but seven days is my minimum. You mentioned so you obviously mentioned the the seven days as minimum. How do you know kind of what the maximum is? How do you decide like we're gonna age it on this for this long? Like, where does that precision come from? Um, trial and error. I mean, I, I, if you ask my wife, I probably think and talk craft beer uh, every day of my life in some aspects. So there's anytime I read anything that has anything to do with, like, fruits or herbs or anything that you put in beer, I, I make a, a physical note being like, okay, if I want to use, you know, dry hop I, I i need to make sure i do it for this long or and not not longer than this i kind of build a time frame out on all these um and i just kind of go on google and say hey how long should i let beer sit on ice cream powder people are telling you i mean it's it's all out there at this point so um, i use the experience from other people and then i create my own and sometimes it's n- not a great idea like the first time we did uh the pineapple uh, or hawaiian whip tide is a pineapple dual whip inspired smoothie sour um, we put everything in one little container and we tried to make it happen and terrible idea. Okay. So one thing that jumped out to me looking at the menu, you've got some long ass beer names for some of your sa- <laughs> smoothie sours. Yeah. Well, so the collaborations with Tarnish Hollow, we've started the Dr. Science Project and Mr. Hollow series. Yes. That's a long name. Yeah, it's a long name. And that's just like the series. And then yeah. we add like. Uh, cherry cheesecake smoothie sour, <laughs> or we had uh, Rocky Road Imperial ice cream stout, or like it, it's obnoxious. It really is. Um, if I'm being honest, I think where I get it from is uh, Burial Brewing in Nashville. Yep. Um, when they started distribution really heavy, they would send their names to the state, and it would come back denied because someone else had that name. So they gave the big middle finger to the state of North Carolina, and they started naming all their beers sentences. Because you're not going to have that. So to, uh, Tom Carpenter over two times and I brewed an Imperial Stout this winter called To Those That Inspire Us and it, Other Things Left great. Unsaid. That was great. By yeah, the way. love that beer. It's fully bu- burial inspired. If you look at the can label, there's a yeah, scythe. Yeah, it is. There's the, the moths for his Dark Necessity beer. There's the monkey reading the books. Um, 
And so like that was the name inspired. So I try to shorten it, honestly. Uh, but that's the big one. And right now there's no, there's two right now on the t- uh, me and uh, Brandon's for Doctor Science Project beers. But um, I, yeah, I try to shorten <laughs> it. I mean, I really do. But uh, sometimes I I get a name and I make the beer to match the name. And other times I have a beer and the name just comes to me. So uh, it's kind of I'm kind of torn on that. <laughs> so. Let's jump into this last beer here. Yeah. This is the Porter. Yep, American Porter. So tell us a little bit about what we got going on. Yeah, so this is a Path of Totality. Um, For those of you that do not know, Path of Totality is the uh, bar of pitch blackness during an eclipse, uh, a solar eclipse. The reason this beer has that name, I mentioned to you guys earlier, when this recipe was first brewed, it was brewed during the eclipse of 2017. I was in Carbondale, Illinois, which, uh, fun little science fact, is the only spot that has ever had two different Path of Totalities cross through it, 2017 and then 2024, next year in April. So at Southern Illinois University, like, NASA was there, like, all the famous scientists that you can think of were there. And so we drove out there with my my father-in-law's sister lives out there, so we went out there. And before we left, we were like, we should take the brewing equipment at the time, it was a it was a burner and a uh, uh, what's it called a deep fryer pot and shit. Like we should take the equipment out there. So we drove the six and a half hours with a whole brewing equipment, um, a sanitizer, a bucket, everything. I brewed this batch of beer. We were mid boil when it went pitch black. We can take the glasses off and look at the su- the sun and the moon or whatever. And then we put the beer in there. And I didn't put the yeast in because I didn't want to ferment in the car. But we drove all the way back, shook the hell out of that bucket the whole way home. <laughs> Uh, and they put the yeast in at home, and it was the first one we ever brewed that way. And uh, so I brewed this beer this year with plans to release it Easter weekend because April 8th, 2024 is the next eclipse, um, and it was April 8th, 2023. Uh, and we had keg washer issues, so the beer was in the bright tank, already carbonated, ready to go, and we didn't get it kegged in time. So it's a little bit of a late release, but um, we plan on brewing it next year for the actual eclipse. and. Um, so it's a it's a roasty American, robust porter, nice and clean. I, was, I really enjoy that beer. So we both really enjoy it. But before we jump into the beer here, <laughs> small world, uh, a good friend of mine and a listener of the podcast, uh, Sydney, lives in Carbondale. Illinois. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, she just moved there from Indy because um, it was cheaper and they grew up in that area nice okay so, small world so shout out love sydney that. <laughs> love that will, will sydney have any yard that we can brew a batch in next april uh she <laughs> might have a yard by next april yeah, right now yeah. she lives in an apartment well but... we'll keep we can do a parking lot if we have to but uh, <laughs> obviously i'm not gonna lug this equipment there but we're gonna do a small ba- I, well i'm trying to I, I would love to be with my kids i teach science so i would love to be at my elementary school kids when it happens um but I would love to Sounds go like back. like a field trip to me. That's uh, literally <laughs> what I was about to say. Yeah. Well, I teach 500 plus kids. A, 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 that's a long field trip for all those kids. But Sounds like special kid field trip. <laughs> that sounds like an entire school is yeah. going to Carbondale, Yeah, Illinois. it would be sick. Uh, Let's get NASA on the phone. We'll set it up. <laughs> Sponsor it all. Sponsored by Can NASA. We, it'd be lovely. I would love to drop this beer like next year, sponsored by NASA, you know, but... I mean, uh, I have a relative that works for NASA. So. You got a lot of connections, <laughs> man. Where you been this That's a whole lot more than me. So I will say with this beer, this is when we got here, we went out, we sat outside um, while we were waiting for you to show up, and, <laughs> and we got a beer. We each got a beer, and this one, I love porter. And so I'm always going to try one, especially yeah. when it's just a straight porter. So uh, actually, my first question is going to be, what makes it an American porter? It's the hops, baby. Yeah, it's a little hoppier <laughs> than your English porter. Uh, so I that's kind of how it all. I don't taste the hops, so that's why I'm it's asking. No, roasty it's, as fuck. Yeah, it's hit. It's real. Yeah, it came out probably a little roastier than I wanted it to be, honestly. But that's the kind of thing about what's kind of fun about uh, Americans. Always can't we can't be outdone. So you go to like go look at, look at the barley wine series. You got English and American. Dude, English, don't even get me started on American barley wines. <laughs> English we're gonna, is we're like, gonna throw down. <laughs> English we are is gonna all throw malt. down. American is all hop, kind of obnoxious. Uh, you know, your English IPA and your American IPA, same thing. You know, so an English porter is more. It's supposed to be more roasty, uh, more malt character, but your American is supposed to be a little bit hoppier. The problem with that is uh, the way porters have gone and the way I like my porters. I like them to be roastier. I like them to be, you know, 
almost, I don't want to say black coffee, but, you know, like that. Like, um, and I hate coffee. Well, I hate hot coffee. I love cold coffee. Um, and so, like, yeah, the, the hops hide. Because, like, you look at the hop amounts in these beers, like, they're heavy. I mean, I think that porter actually is mid-40s. So it's not super heavy. But, like, Imperial Stouts, they're mid-60s. And everyone's like, oh, I'm not going to drink that. I don't like how hoppy it is. I'm like, you'll never taste a 60 hop, the 60 IBU. So why put all the hops in it if you're not going to taste it? Well, because you've you've had hot the black coffee before, right? Uh, that's that flavor, like that burnt, yeah, that burnt bitterness is what you're gonna have. So it actually mellows out that burnt bitter bitterness with okay. bitterness. <laughs> it's kind of weird to say, kind of weird to say, but um, it it mellows out that that bitterness and that burnt flavor with hops. So I I fucking love this beer. Appreciate like, that. Like out of the four here, and and they were all good in their own respect. In their own respects, like we didn't have a bad beer, and as everyone who has listened to this show so far, or anyone who has listened to the original show, like I mean, fuck, I'm wearing a beer brewery shirt, and we shit on beer brewery <laughs> yep. because they had three legit bad beers. Like you shouldn't have diacetyl tasting beer, yeah, on a keg. We're not getting that from any of these. And as you said earlier, everyone's got their own taste profiles. Yeah, if you right. don't like a beer, you don't like a beer, right? I haven't had a problem with any of these beers, but this beer itself, like when I took a drink of it sitting outside, I will say this, and my ADHD is kind of kicking in with these tangents, but <laughs> it was super fucking cold oh, yeah, yeah. Really when we got cold. it outside, and now it's so very it's warmed warm. Up. Yeah, it's warmed up a little bit. Completely different taste profile. Yeah, yeah. So when I originally had it, very roasty, but also very nutty, almost like yeah. a peanut butter Okay. Flavor to it. Because I, I literally took a drink, and I had to flip back and be like, is this a peanut butter, peanut butter porter? porter? Yeah. I was like, what is happening? And yeah. it wasn't on there. I'm like, man, that's crazy. And now you don't really get much of that peanut butter, but you still get all that, that roastiness. Roast. Yeah. And it, it kind of reminds me of an English porter. And I, I have a personal theory of, and obviously it's not an English porter, yeah. but it's, it might as well fucking be. <laughs> if you can nail english style beers here in america yeah you can nail anything yeah like and that may sound crazy and stupid to some people but it's just no there's a thing about that there's a reason why you see some of these breweries that are producing these more classic esbs and that kind of stuff yeah and when those are banging everything else is banging if i go like and get like a mild ale yeah and someone just nails them i'm like you're you there's no way you've missed on any of these beers yeah yeah like kismetic yeah yeah it, Which, if you've not been, I've been over the there yet. Make the trip to Indy. I was gonna say, if you come to Indy, we will let take us you. Know. Yeah, I'll hit you guys up, and and we'll just go out and drink and everything. But this is this is just fantastic. Like this I alone, that. I a hundred percent would say. What and this is the hard part of you not having you know stuff brewed regularly is like it's hard to be like, hey, come and try this yeah. beer. Yeah. The good news is it's pretty new because it's kind of moving slow for us, which is it sucks because like you said, you like it a lot and. So we do have a lot on I mean, tap right now. So it doesn't suck for the people who like it. Though. Yeah, like, right, That's the right. nice thing is they can keep coming and, and, daily. And, and that's like, kind of like yeah, you know on. when we when you know when when we when you guys were like when I saw what you were about and I was like hey I would love you to do the review of Life of the Marty. Life of the Marty for me is a more unique and individual beer. I love this beer, but I'm not going to send this beer to people that want to review beers <laughs> because it's going to either be average or like you said right now you're like I love this beer. So it's like one of those things where it's like, I, there's some classic like my Irish Red that's on right now. I love. That's another beer I wanted to try. I, I love. love that fucking name of that beer. <laughs> that is one of the, just the best name. I saw that. I'm like Mick Alobe. I was like, oh my god, that is fantastic. So that was all the actual owner of the company's idea, and we're gonna enter it in Brewers Cup. And I, I swear, I hope it wins just to hear them say it. But uh, it, it you know, it's one of those things where he came to me and was like. I wanted to do some green, stupid sour for St. Patty's Day. He's like, I would like you to do an Irish Red. I'd never brewed an Irish Red. <laughs> never. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, I got to figure this out. And it's and it just looking at recipes and figuring out how this all works and um, developing a recipe for it. And it just came out clean. It's just solid. It's just where it needs to be. And the light drinkers love it here, which is awesome for us. So, um, I mean, it's called Michelob, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, and it fits. You know, it fits. It, it's a good laugh. And... Um, but that's one of my things is like, you know, I am hype about my weird, my, my more like overly done added adjuncts bull crap. But I, I do really enjoy the idea of sitting down and writing and brewing a more classic style. 
um, this, the Michelob Ultra, or Mick Ultra, uh, Mick Olob. I gotta watch what I'm saying there. <laughs> I said the full name there. Um, the Irish Red, um, our American Wheat, which I really like as well. Um, just those more classic styles. I do enjoy brewing them, and I do enjoy having people that know craft beer and can be like, oh, this is a solid porter. This is a solid wheat beer. You know, cherry on top kind of thing. But, like, at the end of the day, like, I really like brewing hype beers. And I balance it out with I'm going to brew a couple hypes, and I'm going to brew a couple classics, and I hope they all hit. So so on the hype so sort of, I don't know if it's yes. hype anymore, train, the beer that I ordered when we showed up, was the hazy it's on the back mm. page of the menu i don't remember what the stardust so is there carbonation in that beer uh yes <laughs> it, it did get kegged at an under carbonated option uh not option um we were having a leak on our co2 tank um and i i said earlier i had a sim brewer um it was a failed situation where it wasn't fully carbonated it was keg day. Of course, I would pick it. <laughs> yeah, and then we didn't we didn't check it, um, and I think it has affected that beer greatly. It's um, I mean it's re- it's like water. Yeah, the, the flavor's there. Yeah, but yeah. the like mouth feel is definitely not there. Yeah, it it and and I use a different yeast than I normally use because I was trying some things out to try to change up some. It, it, I missed on that beer, uh, and honestly, like the bad part about it is it's people act. People love it, and I and and where I'm at with one of these things is like I I don't want to serve a bad beer. I I never want to do that, but I'm also gonna test the waters before I dump it, because if people are about it and they're gonna drink it, I'm gonna let it ride for a little while, which is so bad of me as a brewer. Like it really is, and I hate that I'm that way. But like our into the Milky Way hazy is like my favorite beer ever. So like like literally, I'll get you some in the future because it's <laughs> it's it's getting rebooted at the end of this month. Like. I need to stick to that hazy, and I need to say F all other hazies. I try to be that, like, we're going to do this series of hazies and just change hops and stuff and do this thing. No, I'm, I, we're going to brew one hazy. It's going to be into the Milky Way. I'm going to use the main hops that everyone loves, and I'm going to produce it the way I need to produce it and, and kind of be that way. So um, it's unfortunate. I, I'm, I'm not super pleased about it. And the, as we get, like, different kegs, like, we'll tap the, – they tapped a new one of that on Monday, and it, like – Give it a couple of days, like on serving pressure. Oh, yeah. yep. It gets car. It gets more serving pressure. I mean, you could crank it up a little and you yeah. know, force carb it. Yeah, it <laughs> it, it sucks. I, I it doesn't. The flavor is good. It just sucks that it's not fully carbonated where it needs to be. Yeah. So, yeah, it happens. Yeah. So, when it comes to to brewing these these kind of crazy styles or just new yeah. beers in general, how many do you brew at home before you bring to the to the big game here like yeah you got so, that, a massive setup <laughs> yeah so when we partnered in 21 that's when i stopped brewing for like north moon brewing quotations here and started brewing for science project and it took us a year and three months to get rolling so i was mass producing beers giving growlers out like trying to be like hey taste this give me feedback i was giving it to um bjcp judges i was giving it to other brewers i was giving it to so before from we're going to do this as science project to first batch brewed here at the brewery. I brewed 127 batches at home. Damn. We're at batch 55, 60 here at the, for the year so far. Um, we're not even close to that 130. Like, I mean the sours we've brewed, did multiple different sours. Um, uh, we've done more batches doubled up now. I don't know if I'll ever get to, I haven't brewed a single batch at home since we started here because I've just, uh, and, and really like Michelob was probably one that I should have done and it got thrown on me too late and I just had to roll with it. And I just had to trust the process that I knew how to brew an Amber and I was going to try to brew an Irish red. So, um, we ran through a lot at home before we got started here. And now I feel comfortable as comfortable here as I do in my garage. So it's, um, I, there's a couple of different styles that we're really looking at. Um, a mild is one of them. I'll probably do that at home before I do it here, just to make sure that it's it is what it is. So, and we talked about bringing in a small like one barrel kettle in here, um, and using these elements that we have here in that. So if I can figure out how to do that, then we'll do like a couple one barrel batches of stuff and kind of do it that way instead of in my garage. So, but yeah, we we did we pumped it out that summer of oh 2021 and then early 22. So. That's kind of how it was. So a lot, but not recently. 
So as we wrap up the show here, is there anything that we've missed? Is there anything about Science Project that you want people to know about? Um, I think it's a big thing for us, you know, like we're kind of we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Like there's not a lot out here. There's seven pillars in Peru and obviously all the stuff in Lafayette and Monticello and that kind of stuff, but you would really have to try to find a path to make a brew path up this way. You know what I'm saying? Like in Indy, you can go and hit I mean, I think was you was your guys' episode that you like bounce around like five breweries in a yep. day. Yeah. So like it, it, that's hella easy Fort Wayne and Indy. Like you could do that in a couple hours if you really wanted to. And if you didn't drink there and it's got carry out, um, you're not going to have that up here. So like for us up here, like, you know, we do wood, we do, it's, it's like Neapolitan pizza, not technically wood fired, but we, it's, it's Neapolitan style pizza. Um, our dough was created using um, some help from a guy in Elkhart, who's like a, a certified pizza Ria guy, I guess. I don't know. Our pizzas are really good. Um, I really enjoy the pizzas. And then, you know, just kind of, like check check what we got going online. Check what we got going on, and just come give us a try. I mean, we're kind of breaking into that indie market with festivals. We're gonna be in Grand Junction this weekend. We were at Frigid Digits. Um, we're back at uh, Loggers of Lawrence, I think, in October. Yeah. I think. Um, but like, I, I would say you know the idea of like small town breweries and what we're doing and what we're trying to pull off is something that like. If you if you're if you're about the small town life and you want to come up and you know hit the little drive in in the town or go to the reservoir and go swimming and that kind of stuff, come check us out like uh, or if you see us anywhere like go try the the beers we got we got beers on tap in in, or in Fort Wayne we're working on places in Indy you know we're only been around for a year but at the same time like uh, we're very passionate about what we're pulling off and we're, what we're trying to pull off um, and so if you if you know if you have any questions reach out via Facebook or Instagram or any of that stuff, but give us give us a shot. If you see us somewhere, come say hi. Um, I love to talk beer again. You know, we, we we could be here all night. You know, if you guys didn't have a two hour drive, two hour plus drive home, uh, we continue these flights and do whatever else. But come say hi. You know, I'm I'm normally at one of most of the festivals pouring beer because I like to talk beer. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's a journey. We're still working. We're still learning. There's you know we're still doing things that we're still trying to figure out. But at the end of the day, like. It's a unique place to be, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. So, Where can people find Science Project on social media? So it is uh, Science Project Brewing on both Instagram and on Facebook. Um, we do have, like, the TikTok and the Twitter and stuff, but we've not done anything on there. So don't go look for us there. <laughs> but, um, and then sciencefactorbrewing.com is the website. Uh, it does need some updating. We're still trying to work through that out. But it's one of those things that we kind of have focused in-house here and not more of the – website which is kind of a struggle for us right now so we're, we're, we're get it figured out but um we're at festivals all summer long um be on the lookout for us we're gonna be at hops and drops at uh indiana beach hops and coaster and, drop yeah, yeah sean and, will have a, f- a special beer for that yeah so. yeah in september we'll be there we're in lawrence in october or i'm hoping we're gonna be at the brewers cup festival um in july probably fort wayne in september at brood in the fort um we'll be around so i mean uh, and we have beers on tap in Monticello, Fort Wayne, hopefully Indy here soon. We're working on some things down there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. Awesome. Well, you can uh, also follow us on Instagram. We are at Barrel Chat. And make sure you uh, leave us a review, if you would like, on any of the podcast apps that you use. If you got a beer that uh, you want us to talk about or maybe a brewery that you think we should reach out to, or if you're a brewery yourself, just like Cody here, and you want to reach out and uh, be on the show, just let us know. You can send us a DM on Instagram, slide into those DMs, or shoot us an email. We are at Barrel Chat, or at, <laughs> wrong Good Lord. We are Barrel Chat Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. So with that, that is going to do it, and we will see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thanks for coming.